Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous sessions we introduced this evolutionary game theory. So, in the evolutionary game theory the major idea is uh, to introduce this concept of evolutionary stable strategy and connecting this with replicator dynamics. So, one of the very interesting fact about replicator equation is that in the replicator equation if you really look back, so the strategies which are performing better are adapted in the population. Then as the time progresses the people adapt to a fitter and fitter strategies and eventually it leads to evolutionary stable strategy. And in fact the one of the inter very interesting idea here is that the subrationality is connected with the rational behavior which is given by a Nash equilibrium. So, the evolutionary st stable strategy is in that sense is a very interesting subject on its own. And there are many other uh, in fact the replicated dynamics also will provide a nice way of learning the equilibrium. So, under what equilibria will be the stable points under this dynamics. So, this question is a very important and in fact people have tried variety of methods and the one of the method that uh, um, we have seen earlier is fictitious play. Even though we have not given a very detailed description about fictitious play at that point of time. Now, we will look at this fictitious play in a little more close uh, detailed way. So, before going further uh, into the uh, fictitious play, I just want to mention about one example which uh, I have not completely done in the previous sessions is uh, the hawk dove game. Let me recall the hawk dove game and then uh, just make a statement and then uh, we will go to the fictitious play. So, so what is the hawk dove game? Hawk dove game this uh, is introduced by Maynard Smith basically to uh, this is game is introduced to illustrate the idea of evolutionary stable strategies. So, you think basically the idea is uh, that there is a large population of some species and the species have two types of behavior one is hawk behavior and other is dove behavior. The hawk is basically an aggressive threat this is modeled by hawk and the passive strategy or trait is the, the dove behavior. Okay. So, what happens is that in the large population for example, they will be contesting for some resources, okay. there could be food, nesting site, territory and other kind of thing. When two species of this population, two of this from this population meet, they can actually show the hawk behavior or they can show the dove behavior. If dove behavior means but both of them are not fighting for the resource, so therefore they do not fight each other and then they share the resource. But if uh, one hawk and one dove encounters the hawk behavior wins over the dove and hawk behavior takes over the resources and the dove loses that. And if the two hawks encounter uh, because both of them are aggressive and then one of them will lose and the other gets this thing. So, this is basically the this thing. So, there uh, let us assume the resource of value which is greater than 0 okay. and uh, there is a cost of injury C which is again positive cost. So, now, let us look at it. Now, there are hawk, hawk behavior. If both the people are playing hawk behavior, that means they will get a resource, one of them will get a resource V and at other one is incurring a cost C. So, therefore, on an average, the hawk 
population gets v minus c by 2 and of course v minus c by 2 v minus c by 2 and whereas uh, if one hawk encounters and other is dark the hawks actually get the resource and there is no cost here that is going to be v and then the doe gets nothing because it simply gave up it is not fighting. Similarly doe 1 h that becomes a 0 v and then when both of them are doe then they are just simply sharing the resource no cost here this is going to be v by 2 v by 2. So, this is the hawk dove game. In fact, we have introduced this game previously, but we have not done the complete analysis. I will just make the statement here. If the resource has a cost uh, is higher than cost, hawk is hawk is a strictly dominant strategy. Therefore, in this case actually the game becomes prisoner's dilemma. If C is greater than V, the game turns into what is called game of chicken. In this game, there are two asymmetric Nash equilibria where one player is hawk and the other is these are all uh, which you can verify easily ok one player will play hawk and other player will play doe. However, there is a symmetric Nash equilibrium here. In fact, uh, let me put it as a lemma here. Hawk dove game with C greater than V has one ESS. In fact, that is x is equals to v by c 1 minus v by c. So, the hawk behavior with probability v by c and doe behavior with 1 minus v by c probability. So, this is going to be a, a ESS here. So, in fact, uh, to prove this one, uh, I do not go into the details here. You can simply verify the conditions of uh, the local superiority which we have introduced in one of the lemma are even directly verifying from the definition of ESS. So, uh, with this now I will shift the focus to fictitious play. Okay. So, what is this fictitious play? In fact, in the zero sum game we have introduced already this game. So, let me recall uh, what this fictitious play is. So, so there is an under, underlying game A comma B. Okay. So, the game proceeds in several rounds. Okay. So, let us take player 1, player 2. So, let us say in the round 1, player 1 let us say plays a pure strategy or let me put a 0, player 1 plays a pure strategy a 0 and player 2 plays a pure strategy b 0. In the round 2, the player 1 knows that player 2 has played b 0 in the previous round. So, therefore, he will try to play best response to b 0. So, pure best response to b 0. So, a 1 is nothing but is pure best response to b 0. Similarly, player 2 will also play B1 which is pure best response to A0. In the round 3, what, ha what happens is that the player 1 sees that player 1 has played B0 and B1 in the previous round. So, 
he assumes that he will play B0 with uh, B0 on B1 with equal probability. So, therefore, he will look at the pure best response of B0 plus B1 by 2. And then similarly, player 2 will play B2 which is a pure best response of A0 plus A1 by 2 and this goes on. Okay. Whatever we are having these are the empirical averages that the players are playing it. Now what the fictitious play says is that these empirical averages in fact converges to the Nash equilibrium. Okay. So what it says the fictitious play it says that A0 plus A1 plus An, A, An by if I go for N plus 1 rounds this converges to X star B0 plus B1 plus Bn by n plus 1 converges to y star and x star y star is Nash equilibrium. So, this is a conjecture made and then Julia Robinson proved this for 0 sum games. Okay. So, uh, the proof is actually a technical, it is not, uh, it, it uses elementary arguments, but it is quite long and technical. Therefore, we will not go into the proof of this, uh, but uh, we will see some consequences of it. So, first before uh, going further, let us understand why this is a interesting learning algorithm. So, this is a learning algorithm in the sense that when this game is played repeatedly, what you are really inferring is that based on your belief about what the other guy is playing, you are forming an opinion. So, basically you are assuming that the player 2 is going to play B0, B1, Bn with equal probabilities. So, that is why we are considering this empirical distribution and my response in the next round is to play a best response to this and then whether this eventually these best responses will converge to the optimal strategy for me or not that is the biggest question here. In fact, the answer to this general question is negative the mean, meaning that this need not be true. Okay. So, why this is not true? For example, let us look at uh, another interesting aspect of it. In this particular thing, I do not know what the other guy's payoff is. The players are not at all, they do not need to know anything about the payoffs of their opponent players. They only need to watch strategy they have played. And in a zero sum game automatically because my payoff is nothing but the minus of the others payoff. Therefore, I know automatically what the other payoff. So, therefore, the information is available about the payoffs. But in a non-zero sum game, this is completely saying that the other player payoff function is imme completely immaterial for this. So, therefore, it is difficult to believe that this converges and in fact uh, Lloyd Shapley has provided a counter example which we will see. Okay. So, in fact, as I pointed out the advantage of this fictitious play is I have no need to know about anything about the payoffs of others. And, uh, only thing I need to know is that what he is playing in the in these rounds. Okay. So, let us look at few points. Let me introduce this little formally the fictitious play. Let me rewrite the fictitious play. So, there we are considering only two players. They are playing the game at time t is equals to 0, 1. So, define eta i t is from s minus i to n be the, the number of times i has observed 
s minus i in the past. Okay, eta i t tells you the number of times i has observed s minus i in the past. Okay. Okay. Let uh, eta i zero of s minus i is the represents the starting point. So, this we are not uh, this is the starting point at time t is equal to 0 we have no past information. So, therefore, we consider this as a starting point. Uh, this eta i t is basically the number of times i has observed s minus i. Therefore, the players uh, choose action in each period to maximize the periods expected payoff given their prediction. So, uh, opponent actions are predicted according to the beliefs they are forming, beliefs are formed according to mu i t s minus i this is nothing but eta i t s minus i by summation s minus i bar in s minus i eta i t s bar minus i. So, basically this is this particular thing is telling the how mu i t s minus i his belief that he is playing s minus i uh, the player i thinks that the uh, upper his opponent is playing s minus i the number of times he's up, up, he has uh, this is the total number of strategies that he has observed in the past and then this eta i t tells you how many times s minus i he is observed in that past. So, this is the relative frequency of observing s minus i. So, mu i t the player i's belief about player his opponent player is given by this one. So, the player is now uh, this once this belief is there he, the player chooses just his action at time t to maximize his payoff. Okay, that is what exactly it means is that he will choose S i t which maximizes over his strategies of the payoff. So, u i is the payoff of uh, his if I take S i and then mu i t. Mu i t is the strategy that he uh, has believing that the opponent is following. So, when the opponent follows mu i then what is the si which maximizes my payoff that sit is what I will choose. So, this is basically the this thing. So, this is the reason why I am saying that the players they do not need to know what the other players payoff is it only depends on the beliefs about what the other guys are playing. Okay. And one more thing is that this is not unique because the, there may be multiple best responses. So, therefore, uh, depending on uh, this thing uh, different things can be there. So, we one has to look at a this thing. So, let us uh, consider uh, some examples. So, let us take 3 3 0 0 4 0 1 1. So, u d l r this is uh, in fact uh, if you look at it this game is dominant solvable you can easily verify this is uh, this can be solved by domination. So, in fact the unique Nash equilibrium is d r dr is going to be the unique Nash equilibrium which you can verify. Now, let us say assume eta 1 0 
is 3 0 eta 2 0 is 1 2.5 okay so initially uh, initial uh, feel, uh, starting point is eta 1 0 is 3 comma 0 eta 2 0 is 1 2.5 okay so now in the period 1 the round 1 so mu 1 0 is going to be 1 comma 0 and mu 2 0 is going to be 1 by 3.5 2.5 by 3.5 okay so play follows s10 is d s20 is l so if you take uh, 1 0 is the belief and then mu 2 0 is uh, this thing so what is the best response to this mu 2 0 that is going to be the player 1 if you look at it that best response is going to be d for player 1 and the best best response to mu 1 0 for player uh, 2 is going to be l this is a straightforward calculations you can see it so with these details i will exclude so therefore this thing in the period 2 now the beliefs are updated so eta 1 1 now becomes 4 0 okay and then uh, because he has uh, this thing eta 2 1 is going to be 1 3.5 basically the the what basically eta 1 1 tells you how many times he thinks L is played and how many times R is played. And similarly, eta 2 1 is telling you how many times U is played and D is played. So, those updates, so they are increasing. Okay. So, now in this case, eta 1 1 is going to be there and then uh, correspondingly mu 1 is there and then in fact, we can see that S 1 1 is going to be D here, S 2 1 is going to be R here. It again follows from the same thing. Okay look at the mu 1 0 and mu 2 0 they are the probability distributions coming from here and then look at their best responses then d and r comes in a period 3. So now eta 1 2 this becomes 4 1 and eta 2 2 becomes 1 4.5 okay. So in this case s 1 2 is going to be d S22 is going to be R. Okay. Now you, ha you have reached to D and R and after this whatever they play it is already you are arrived at an equilibrium. they it you can verify one few more rounds and then they continue playing D and R throughout afterwards. So therefore in this game it has reached to a Nash equilibrium. Okay. In fact, uh, we can prove the following thing. Uh, let me uh, mention some statements and then uh, I will not go into the proofs of it. So, let ST be sequence of strategy profiles. generated by by fictitious play. So now thing is that sequence ST converges to S if there exists T such that ST is equals to S for all T greater than T. If this happens, I will say that ST converges, this is the definition. So in fact, uh, we can prove the following theorem. If ST converges to S bar, then S bar is Nash equilibrium. That is one point. Second point is if suppose for some T ST is equals to S star 
where S star happens to be a strict Nash. Then afterwards S tau is going to be S star for all tau bigger than or equal to T. So at some point if a strict Nash equilibrium is uh, played in the fictitious play and afterwards it will be played. And the first theorem says that if there is a sequence which uh, the fictitious play sequence ST converges to some S bar then S bar is automatically a Nash equilibrium. The proofs are actually not very hard it can be uh, verified easily. Of course th this is basically a pure strategies but if we look for a mixed equilibrium as I said the uh, problem is uh, it need not converge. But let us say uh, let me mention one more uh, result okay. let us say the fictitious place sequence ST converges to a mixed strategy profile sigma in the time average sense. If for all i and all si in si we have limit t going to infinity summation t is equal to 0 to t minus 1 indicator of si t is equal to si then take 1 over t of this, this is not the converges sigma si where i is the indicator this is basically indicator. What it means that whenever si t is equal to si this becomes 1 otherwise it is 0 and basically you are counting how many si t's are si okay? and then take the average you count up to capital T minus 1 and then divide by t this particular term converges to sigma si then I will say that this sigma st converges to sigma in the time average sense. In other words actually what we are saying is that mu minus i t of si converges to sigma i si this is same as that we can verify this one. Okay. Then again another theorem which says is that uh, if st converges to sigma in time average sense then sigma is Nash equilibrium. Okay. So this is again not a very hard uh, uh, thing to prove it. So in fact here is one exercise I would like to give is, is check this for matching pennies. In the matching pennies example write down the, the fictitious play sequence and then take the time average sequence and see that there is a convergence happening here. So the most important thing is that this non-convergence. Okay. So, so basically this is due to Shapley. It is a modified rock paper scissor game. He considers the following thing rock scissor paper so he looks at the following matrix okay so um, in fact one exercise is it has a unique mixed nash equilibrium okay so in fact that is going to be 1 by 3 1 by 3 1 by 3 this is going to be the mixed nash equilibrium unique mixed nash equilibrium which is uh, not uh, hard to now what i will give is uh, outline the ideas of non convergence that start with eta 1 0 to be 1 0 0 eta 2 0 is initial belief is this 
Okay. So, uh, initial belief is this if you take the next round in the period 0 play is p comma r in the period 0 play, the play will be p and r then period 1 in fact play will become in fact p r then this continues until player 2 switches to yes. So, uh, I would uh, like you to write down the arguments initially because of this beliefs P R will be there and then in fact it, it P R will be played for certain periods until player 2 switches to yes. Okay. Once player 2 switches to uh, yes then what happens is that play continues with P s until player 1 switches to R for some certain number of periods again and then, then it goes to R s again it continues again until player 2 switches to P. Okay. So, it goes on like this and every time the whole idea here is that the amount of time it is playing P R and amount of time this is played here that keeps on increasing. So, therefore, this will never lead to a convergence. Okay. So, I would like all of you to write down these details. In fact, if you start looking at it how many times this will be played for example, in let us say this lasts for some k periods and then this particular thing will last for some beta k periods and then this will last for some beta square k periods and it goes on. So, that means the amount of time that a particular strategy is the fictitious play is going on is increasing uh, with the number. So, therefore, the time average will never converge here. Okay. So, I will leave these details here and which uh, I will ask you to fix and with this we will uh, stop this and we will continue in the next session. Thank you.